All right, hey everybody. Time for the large grow tent update, and I wanted to show you the uh, the redesign of what we have going on in here. Because I told you last week I was going to get rid of some of the tomatoes, and well, I've chopped them off, and I've only saved the ones that I wanted to see if I can actually get to grow, giving them a little more room. So I saved the one over there, as I mentioned. I saved the one here. I saved the one here, and I, I thinned out a bunch of the low leaves, lower you know lower leaf uh, growth to give it some more air and a little more light to the actual uh, tomatoes themselves. So I've thinned out the leaves, the branch structure, and then uh, you know I've kept this one here. And I'm hoping this is gonna get more light to this guy here, because it was getting kind of shadowed by the ones that were kind of growing over the cage, which was the plan, but it wasn't giving me the uh, growth and the yield of actual ripening fruit that didn't have the blossom end rot. So I added a little bit of uh, calcium magnesium to the soil here this week to try and balance out, you know, if it's in a need for any kind of calcium additions or magnesium, I'm hopefully giving them that, so that way they can uh, stem the problem I was having with the blossom end rot. But that could also be because of, you know, it was so dense in here that I wasn't able to adequately get the water nozzle into the areas that I needed, so I just kind of just shot it over the top, over to the peppers. And uh, I don't think that was giving it a good, good basis for having a consistent amount of water to the roots, because I've never actually had blossom end rot on my tomato plants indoors. So that was kind of a first. So it's kind of, you know, it's a learning experience. Maybe these trays aren't the best to try and grow tomatoes in. I know that because you don't have a real depth of uh, roots and you're gonna be competing with the, the uh, peppers in that, uh, that grow media for moisture and for uh, your root depth. So it was just an experiment. I thought I would try this winter, something different because last winter I grew nothing but kales inside of here, I believe. And uh, we had a lot of uh, lettuce greens we were eating, really healthy for the uh, gut bacteria. But uh, now we've thinned it out and we're doing this now. So I'm pretty happy with the, uh, the growth of the tomatoes. But in a couple of weeks, this is all gonna get thinned out and uh, we're gonna be starting our spring garden plants in here. So a lot of this stuff's gonna just disappear anyway and uh, get sent off to the compost heap. And as part of the new thing, I'm actually gonna be getting a new uh, worm co composter bin that's gonna be showing up, I believe, this Tuesday. So there'll be a video on that, and I'm going to transition from using the uh, Worms 360 uh, stack trays that I've been using, and I'm really happy with that, and it's good, but we eat so many vegetables that it takes a long time to process inside that before I can actually get the worm compost out, and I want to jump from having probably around 6,000 worms in there active to right around 20,000 worms. And with this new uh, Hungry Bin worm composter, you can get up to 20,000 worms working in there and actively composting for you and then you know I should get a quicker turnaround for the amount of compost I'm feeding into it so I should be getting you know at least a tray every three to five weeks I think they say so instead of waiting you know four weeks to six weeks I might actually increase that up so I can get the uh, worm compost nutrients coming out and this one's supposed to be able to uh, cut down on the bugs that get in there so I got a lot of black soldier fly larva in the uh, the bin that I have now because it's not a sealed top bin and trying to use that in my indoor grow as a uh, fertilizer, mania, uh, fertilizer medium has been kind of uh, <laughs> kind of freaks you out when the black soldier flies start to uh, hatch and they start flying around inside the tent. Paula does not like coming down here in, in, the, in the, uh, the grow area when those things are flying around because they have a kind of a buzzy sound. They won't bite you or sting you, but they do freak her out. So I cut back on doing that. So hopefully that worm bin will take care of that. And uh, well, I guess we got the pepper. I didn't talk about the pepper. We harvested off some more peppers. You can see that we've got this one here. I'll probably take this week for our salad. And uh, we've got another big one over here. And having these tomatoes thinned out is gonna give this pepper plant the ability to really take off in this spot. So I'm kind of happy, you know, looking forward to seeing that. As you can see, there's, there's some more peppers down here. There's another one there. And uh, there's some new flower buds starting to show up inside here. So we should be getting some more peppers continuing on through this plant here. Uh, what else? We're starting to see some growth, I guess back there, you know, you got some flowering back there on those. And then there's some new peppers that are starting to form, the bigger ones you can see back there, the little yellows. So I'm gonna definitely keep that tray going when I start taking out peppers. Because now that I've got it thinned out for tomatoes, I'm gonna see which pepper plants I want to keep going. And then I'll eventually probably just cut them out and start sticking them into one tray and saving them. That whole tray I'm probably gonna save and just take outside this spring. But uh, some of these other trays, they're kind of hit or miss. Like that one back there looks like a pretty good plant. You know, that one over there has got a lot of nice regrowth. Some old peppers I need to trim off today. 
But uh, some of these other ones, I just figure, you know, we'll just grow it and see what happens. And you got this older, older one that all of them got their seed from. It's it's got some new greed growth and some peppers that I'll be able to harvest. But uh, there's also, you know, not much yield coming out of there. So it's not a real, real good venture if you're really energy conscious and you're trying to get the most bang for your buck, you should be doing probably with the LED lights that I've got, be doing kales and uh, you know microgreens and lettuces. Those will be the best bang for the buck if you wanna have something that's gonna grow on a consistent rate and a consistent harvest. But this year was kind of an experiment year I wanted to do for you guys to uh, let you see what you know some of these sweet peppers look like and some of the bigger peppers like this one here look like and then as well as some of the tomato plants because I haven't done tomato plants inside here for a few years. So it's kind of interesting, and plus I have the new ceramic metal hydride lights in here. Those are new for this year. So it's not just the LEDs that are given light inside this tent, it's also these. And these new, uh, these new lights, I really do like these for what they're giving me on my growth for tomatoes. So I cannot wait to actually take this bench out. And when I start getting my spring plants going in here, and I'll set up my watering system for all my eggplants, my tomato plants that'll all be along the bottom around the back there and I can get everything started this year. I'll start them off on the bench, but then as they get bigger, you know, I'm anticipating I'll probably start those in another three weeks, so the end of February, and by the time I plant those out in May, they're gonna be probably, you know, from the bench height, they'll be about that tall, because that's about how tall they were last year with that same growing. But I've got these new lights here, so hopefully that'll actually increase their, their growth and their, uh, their, their stockiness, because I'd rather stick plants outside that have a nice uh, thick stalk and they're short and squatty versus tall and leggy because you're gonna get a much better plant that's gonna to adapt to the environment when it gets outside a lot quicker. All right, well, I'll stop babbling now, guys. This has been Brian from PMB Homesteading. Talk to you again. Bye.